All right. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining. Um, as always, uh, we record these meetings to post them, and we post them on YouTube for those who can't, uh, who are not here, um, so they can keep up with what's going on. Um, it's going to be kind of a, um, a, a good meeting, or uh, a particularly good meeting today because Nils is here. So, um, and uh, we will get into his stuff in just a little bit. Um, I, why don't we do introductions since I'm not sure if Nils knows everyone. Why don't you introduce yourself, Nils? Yeah, um, I'm a developer, I'm 35 years old and I live in Germany. Um, I came in touch with OpenWRT about, I think, 10 years ago. This was with the old blue router thingies. Um, I used it since then, but more as a user. I built my own custom firmware, but I never actually developed a feature. So this is like my uh, premiere now. Um, yeah, so I developed a feature. Awesome. Wi-Fi schedule. Um, I think we'll look into that later. Yep, definitely. Awesome. Thank you. Kathy? Oh, um, Kathy Jory, I work for Arduino now, but we have a couple of boards that use OpenWRT on them. Uh, Felix, we're doing introductions. Yeah, hi. I'm, well, um, do I need an introduction? I guess uh, most people here probably already know me. Yeah, I, Nils hasn't met everyone here, so I just thought we'd do quick introductions. Uh, Matteo. Hi, guys. Uh, Matteo Carlini, Software Development Manager for ADB. We use uh, OpenWRT as a basis on all our installed uh, gateways. That's it. Awesome. Um, anyone else from ADB want to do a quick introduction? Or I know Mauro, I believe. Hi, I'm Mauro Anelli. I am a software engineer here in ADB. Awesome. Thank you. Um, Walter? Yep, my name is Walter Klusens. I'm uh, the gateway software stack architect of uh, Soft at Home. We do a software stack for gateways and other devices, uh, which happens to not be based on OpenWRT, but we have similar interests. That's great. Awesome. Thank you. Um, board farm status? Um, I, I don't know if there's anybody here who's using Board Farm right now. Is there? What is Board Farm? I mean, I read so much about it that I want to take the chance to um, know more about it, learn more about it. Absolutely. Uh, board Farm is a um, it's a Python. Uh, it's a piece of Python software for automating and running tests on physical. Uh, OpenWRT or really any Linux-based hardware. Um, so in the case of, of, and it originally came from Qualcomm Atheros, who is one of the members of, of Purple, uh, and we use it at Purple for um, testing some boards and we're trying to improve automated testing for OpenWRT and LEAD and um, all those things. So you can certainly use it on your own and we encourage people to help us develop it. It's, it's all open source, so. So, so I don't know. There was one question coming up when I was developing the feature. I mean, I can test it on the three routers I have at home, but I mean, there are a bunch more out there in the wild. So, is that something you're you're intending to open it up for other developers so they can test their features on a broader hardware? Or is that is that what it's for, or is it is it just for you guys at Purple and? and the code is there for everyone who wants to set up his own environment. Well, I think it's a little bit of both. Um, uh, we haven't. We do have this uh, of this goal at some point of giving people access to to run it on different pieces of hardware. There's a lot of security issues with that, and potentially people can damage the hardware. So we have to be. We have been really cautious on that. Um, but at some point, I think that is something we want to do. We have an instance of Board Farm on our own, and we have. Um, about three boards in it that we that we run builds we install builds every day and and we need and um, we're going to continue uh, 
adding to that. Uh, I know Kathy's got a number of boards that she's going to get to me, and I have some other ones that people have promised they're going to get to me at some point. Um, and then we're just going to uh, expand that as we go. But you certainly encourage, we encourage people to run their own too on, on their own. I mean, if, if it fits their needs and to contribute back in any way they can. Cool. Awesome. Good. And I just wanted to mention that uh, from what you mentioned about the, you know, test your own thing. Like if you develop a new function, all you need to do in, all you need to do, I'm overstating, <laughs> but you need to write, you could write some Python scripting that, test the functionality of the package or the daemon or the application or whatever it is you just did, you would have to write some script that essentially unit tests it, that goes out and pokes it or bangs it or how, however it works, make sure that those functions that you expect to be working are still working. Yeah, right. I mean, I was just being curious if it would be possible or if there is a broad zoo of hardware, exotic hardware that there is access to where you could run your code on the actual physical hardware. This this is where my yeah. question comes from. We would like that, and I think we're we're trying to move in that direction. But it it's just getting all the stuff. And if you, we certainly accept donations as well from people. You know, if they have a, a piece of hardware that they want to donate, we more than happy to accept it and and put it into the one we run. And that's and the. You know the results of that is available, and we if we have, um, you know, trusted members of the community, we can have access it. We can't because of security, and we don't want the hardware damaged. You know, sure. we can't just give it to everyone. But as long as I mean, someone like you who's, you know, working with Purple, I I don't see we would certainly allow that. And I think. Brilliant. Okay. Yep. Awesome. Um, I am working on the board that I got from Lantique. Um, there, there's uh, I had flat. I, there was some stuff that I had to do add to Board Farm for it, and then there was a. Um, I just tried to flash it, and there was some problems with the um, the image. It wasn't booting. I have to talk to Hauke exactly why that might be. Um, so, uh, but I am in the process of adding that one. Um, on funding OpenWRT projects, these are probably going to be the thing we're going to talk about today. Uh, Nils, uh, you had, would you like to present on, on the work you did? Yeah, I would love to. Um, can you give me the presentation? Uh, yep, I just promoted you. Brilliant. So, can everyone see my screen? Um, no. Do no. I have to click here or anything? Sharing? Well, let me. I stop sharing. Maybe you, you can share now. Let's see. Let's see if I do. I need to activate that in any sense, or am I sharing now? Let's mm -hmm. try again. There's a share button at the bottom of the window. Oh, I see. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah. Maybe I click on that one. Click on that and then click share screen. You should be good. Okay, so awesome. now you should see what like the um, main screen looks like. Mm -hmm. um, so there is a global section. There is a global enable disable button. So first, let me let me step back. I mean, what what is this feature about? It's about um, you can create a schedule when you want your wireless to be turned on or turned off on the device and why you want to have that i mean there are various reasons one is for instance you don't want you have a wireless access point in your bedroom you don't want to it to be enabled during the night when you sleep you don't need it actually so you could do that i mean some people are aware of um, <clears throat> are afraid of um, wireless radiation so this could be an argument Another um, thing is you could also save electrical power by disabling um, the Wi-Fi when you don't need it. So I roughly estimated about 0 0.8 watts I can save. I mean, that doesn't sound much, but think of larger scale in a company, for instance, or if everyone in the world would do that. Um, 
Yeah, so another use case could also be um, you have an access point in your kid's room and you don't want them after 10 p.m. to be using Facebook or they should sleep actually, so you want to turn down the Wi-Fi, so some enforcing of some usage hours, if you want to call it like that. So coming back to the screen we see here, I mean, this is like the main screen um, of this feature is a global section. There's a global enable button. Um, there is another three buttons, like you can, all the function the, the script in the backend does, you can trigger also with this button. So, I mean, you can imagine if you, the Wi-Fi is disabled, um, you, ha you would have a hard time um, enabling it if you need it. So you can go to a, a computer that has LAN access and from there you could press the activate button and there you go. Um, then there is this uh, disable Wi-Fi gracefully. I mean, there are two options how you can shut down the Wi-Fi once. Uh, one is gracefully, which means it waits and rechecks until all stations are um, disassociated. Um, this is like the nice version. Um, you're not kicking off anyone. There's also the forced uh, version, which um, yeah kicks uh, or disconnects people actually from using the Wi-Fi. Um, so then we see um, this uh, schedule event here. Um, I put in some examples like business hours would be Monday to Friday starting at 6, 6 a.m. in the evening and at 10 p.m. Um, it shuts down. And I unchecked this uh, force uh, checkbox. So, I mean, if someone needs to work longer than 10 p.m., that's fine. Once he disconnects, the Wi-Fi will be turned off. And then the second one is the weekend. Um, so that's Saturday, Sunday, um, start time, stop time. Both is um, uh, about midnight, so that means the Wi-Fi at midnight will be turned off until the next day midnight. So it means basically all the whole night or the, uh, the whole day, whole 24 hours, the Wi-Fi will be turned off. And I check the force button. So I mean, on on Saturday at zero i say okay all people should go home and work uh, and get some sleep but now maybe i want to change that so i delete the weekend entry and i create a new one for saturday because there is some um, let's say there is a workshop going on on saturday um so this one is only for saturday it starts it's um, the workshop starts at say 7 a.m and it and at, you can even enter a custom time, so it might be, I don't know, 14, 30, for instance, and I don't want it to be um, forced. So now I add another one for Sunday, and there I could, for instance, keep my original turn the Wi-Fi off the whole day. Okay, save and apply. Um, yeah, one thing I forgot, I forgot to activate those. Um, and there is one more thing I left out. This is this uh, option, unload modules. Um, I marked it ex experimental because it's a kind of a bit intrusive. So if I check that, um, I could enter here the wireless driver modules I want to unload, but since not all people know how they were called, um, there is an, some automation. I press this button and it doesn't work. Yeah, that's, <laughs> um, that's what happened. Yeah, it doesn't work. Usually, I mean, I just converted this whole code to lead. Um, I was using OpenWRT before. Um, it was working, you must believe me, and I think it's a small thing, but I can I can just add the module here by hand. Or we first do a try without that, maybe it screws up some other thing. I, I wasn't um, 
checking that thoroughly. But please bear with me, still under um, development. Um, so I leave it unchecked. I saved it and now we can see there is another entry in the top here um, where I can view actually the cron jobs that have been created. So this is quite a bunch now. There's the one for Sunday that forces the Wi-Fi that is forced up. Um, and the other ones, yeah, I won't go into detail now. And there is a, a log file here. Um, you can see, okay, the cron function was called, I, I can, I don't know how much time, Eric, do we have, by the way? I mean, I, I don't want to bore you with too much details. Um, uh, you can get, have a few more minutes, it's not a big you'll, deal. You'll give yeah. me, yeah, give me a sign. Okay, so what I wanted to show you then um, is how the... Um, Disable gracefully actually works. I mean, I'll connect my phone now um, with the wireless. Maybe it's not enabled because I can't see it. Just one question while you're doing this, Nils. Um, the disable Wi Fi gracefully and, and the various the functionality, did you create the functionality or is that, or are you for Lucy just hooking into something that already exists? Um, a bit of both. I mean, the the actually activate and the disable with force. Um, those are I just call the the script Wi-Fi. Um, mm -hmm. been Wi-Fi, uh, either with down or with uh, no option. So I can I can show you um some code here. Um, so that would be the the stop or the force stop. So when I when you go up to the actual function, you see okay, it's calling has been Wi-Fi down. Um, but the regarding the graceful shutdown, so that would be soft. Uh, this method here, I mean, there is some functionality I created which pulls IV info um, um, to see if there is a station associated, and then. Um, shuts down or schedules a recheck. So does that? Yeah, so I definitely, awesome. Okay, now I, I my phone is connected with the Wi-Fi. Now I say disable Wi-Fi gracefully. Um, I can see what happens. The log file says, okay, look, there's a station associated. Um, could not disable Wi-Fi due to associated stations. Retrying. Okay, what the, how does this retrying work? There is now a cron job being added that runs now every minute. I, usually the default is every 10 minutes. Just for this presentation to speed up things a bit, I, I put it down to one minute. Now I switch my phone to leave this Wi Fi and we, we wait one minute. And what we hopefully will see is that <clears throat> that the uh, Wi-Fi will get turned off. Uh, I have a quick question. Are you allowing new connections? So if that one's, you know, like one phone is hanging on and so the Wi-Fi is not shut down, if another phone comes along or another, any PC comes along and tries to connect, is it allowed to connect? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, yeah, actually that's allowed. Yeah, as long okay. as one station is, is blocking the shutdown, new stations can so actually yeah this could go on forever i mean it's not sure and it's not de de determined that the shutdown will actually work yeah so let me see okay now the the, the recheck run again uh, and it said no stations associate disabling wi-fi okay and we see the cron jobs this reschedule uh, cron job is gone as well so I mean I can that's, go yeah I think I, I think we should probably move on Nils but I think that's this is really cool uh, yeah. do we have any questions anyone else has I mean let me just then if there are no questions sum up I mean I came up with a f two more things I mean I I opened a pull request with OpenWRT. 
and someone said, okay, why don't you split the front end and the back end functionality, um, which makes perfectly sense. I mean, there are a bunch of people running no Lucy, so why should they um, be tied, or why shouldn't they be able to use this functionality? So I'm looking into splitting. And I, I think miss you cut it. out Nils. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm cut off? You just cut out for a second. Oh, okay. Can you hear me now? Yep. Okay, so I, I'm not sure what you've heard and whatnot, so I repeat quickly, I'm um, thinking of splitting up backend and frontend functionality. Um, that makes per a, a status, like uh, here on the main page, I think there would be nice a green or a red button, uh, a light that says, okay, why? Uh, wireless sections, but I think it would be easier to spot, or the right spot would be to. to... And then, um, last point is. Um, to open WRT and I was a bit lacking out the whole discussion or I, this one um, so that's actually something I'm now looking into to integrating it with lead I see no big issue there and I'm be curious how the whole uh, fork of that is going on as well so yeah that's all from yeah. my side thanks thank you Nels that's great. I think this is, this is really interesting. I, I also like that idea of you splitting the two because I can see this being very useful for people who don't have Lucy. Um, you're on mute, Eric. Is that right? Oh, sorry. There I am. Yep. No, I'm not on mute. Can people hear me? Yep. Yep. Awesome. Okay. Um, well, thank you, Nils, and uh, we really appreciate the work you did, and I think it was really interesting stuff. Um, moving on, uh, Felix, could you have an update on the work you've been doing? Uh, sure. So I've been working on uh, still on the the API for querying a data model suitable for the tier, integrating into an existing tier sixty nine client, and I've made some progress with the actual code. So I've gotten the basic API for uh, listing parameters, getting them and setting them nailed down, um, and I have a like a small example plugin that just shows some static data and what I'm working on right now is integrating with the previous work that I did, which uses a JSON file to define a data model, just so that I, I have multiple implementations that you can combine, that you can actually use at the same time. And uh, I want to get up the code that I have so far uh, as soon as possible. So I was wondering, is there any preference on where I should publish this? Should I just uh, open up a GitLab repo somewhere or put it on my own Git server and make it completely public or what's what's the preference here? I, I would encourage you to make it completely public and I, I don't think there's a, a we would have any sort of requirement. So okay, so as long just as it's public, put it on my it. server and send around a link. Yep. Awesome. Thank you. Do you have any kind of like timeline in when, when you're going to do that? Is Next couple of days, next week, but next couple of days, probably uh, early early next week. If I don't make it uh, today or tomorrow, um, okay. So very soon. Great, that's fantastic, Felix. Great to hear. Any questions for Felix, folks? Had all right, um, Luca. Any update from your end? Um, so sorry for being late. It is really uh, busy on my side. Uh, update from my end is that uh, I think we have, I mean, we have completed what we had in the first uh, project proposal. And uh, I've sent uh, this other one, which uh, had some uh, 
input uh, from from the guys, but uh, I will address that uh, a bit later. And uh, we will be sending another one. And uh, regarding the um, ADB comments for the PR069 stuff, I will take some time and uh, reply to that uh, by the end of the week. And um, that's it. So looking forward right. for the new stuff that is coming and uh yeah when felix publishes his code uh, we will take a look great luca um that that brings up uh the the question uh walter do you have any update on when the code for uh that luca's been working on when that's available for everyone under an open source license yeah there's um there's um we've been looking at it uh this week and there's there's quite a bit of work still to get on uh to get something up and running to a point where we'd like to so we're looking internally to see who we can put on that uh to, to bridge some of the gaps it's right now i don't have a, a clear timeline okay well i i would encourage you to anything you can do to expedite that would be would be very valuable um we want to get, obviously want to get that out there and Walter I didn't I sent you this email um and didn't yes. have a chance to talk with you um everything okay so far delivered from our side uh, any like early comments um we got the uh we pulled in the, the repositories took a, took a look at them uh, we read your email in detail and um and one of our guys, uh, Peter, is uh, is drafting a response, and I checked uh, with uh, with Voitek today as well. Um, so I'm going to either we'll do it in the email, or maybe we should have a short call to to look at the status and see and what we what we still need to do going forward. Um, okay, because uh, yeah, I've apologized because of the traveling. Yeah, things got postponed a bit on our side. But now things are getting back in shape, so yeah, please bear with me and uh, some of the delays, and yeah, that will get sorted out this week. All right. Okay. Um, yeah, and uh, we're certainly going to have Luca work on the on the ADB one, which is which is open source. So um, we'll definitely uh, have that happen. I it's. We've already basically agreed to do it. It's just getting the the formal document and uh, agreement done. So um, that's that's very good, and we certainly want to get uh, all of these out there so people can see it and uh, and improve upon it. Since you know that's after all what we do. Um, any other comments or any questions for Luca? All right. Uh, once again, uh, next round of funding. We we as people had had heard, um, we didn't get as many uh, proposals as we as we'd liked. I've been uh, contacting a number of people, um, and they have expressed interest. It, they're just it. They just had not had time to get it in at the deadline, which was I think two weeks ago. Um, but they are going to make proposals. Um, we're accepting them on a rolling basis. So. As long as we have funding, we will uh, evaluate a proposal and consider uh, funding it. Um, I want to encourage everybody who's on this call to consider submitting a proposal again. Um, if you um, haven't, Luca's done so uh, with the uh, NoSQL uh, RPCD. If I, is that correct, Luca? Is that what it is, that topic? Uh, yes, that is correct. And. Uh... I will address the comments from John and Joe, and uh, yeah, we'll do okay. that a bit later tonight. Awesome. So yeah, that's that's kind of just the general thought. Um, but certainly, if there's any any projects that anyone on this call feels should be funded, or projects that have would people like funded, I would encourage them to submit them. Um, also, if there's any member or anyone else really on this call who has an idea for a project that they really want to get to see done, please 
please uh, bring it up so we can, you know, potentially if it's something really valuable, we will find, we'll try to find someone who can do it or, you know, ask people in the community who we should find to do it. So um, uh, I don't know if there's anything we want to discuss with that, but um, just uh, just keep that in your radar because we do want to spend this money. We've allocated it and we want to make it available to support the community. I have a quick question just on back to the community and Nils touched on it. There was a call that was supposed to be uh, that Hauke, he's not on this call, but maybe Felix, were you and Luca, did you guys actually have a call on November 5th? Is there anything you can comment on or no? Um, we had a call, but uh, some uh, key people were missing. So we did get a lot of uh, a lot done in this discussion. Um, but to to be able to really get a sense of when things are going to go back together again, uh, we need to have another call where uh, some of the people that were missing are then included. Okay. If, okay. if you guys need any help of, you know, whapping people upside the head so they join the call. Just... <laughs> I, think, I think it'll work. Uh, I did some of that myself. Good. Thank Good. you, Felix. Thanks. I, yeah, how, how I did you hear back from Hauke that they um, we were very happy to provide our um, go to meeting instance and he said it went very well so to the best, so I'm 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 happy with that. Um, so yes, obviously that is that is good news that we're going in that direction. Uh, the regulatory update uh, as an update for the for folks, um, I am I was invited. Uh, to participate in the FCC's um, technical advisory committee or subgroup of their technical advisory committee, I guess it is, on um, software controlled radios and as it relates to security and, and uh, preventing interference. Um, I am supposed to be officially a part of the technical advisory committee, but we're waiting on some sort of approval internally. I don't know exactly what it is, but I'm participating right now. So, um, I am. Uh, I'm doing that. I was. That we had a meeting last week. Uh, there is a document that the committee is um, drafting, which I'm participating in, and um, they're very open to understanding the open source community better, which is very reassuring, and um, and are very interested in feedback. Uh, for now, they're asking that we keep the draft confidential. That doesn't mean I can't share it with you. It's just that I have to do it on a kind of an individual basis and would like people, you know, if you do want to see it and give your feedback, I would ask you not to share it with other people without asking me. Um, but it, you know, eventually once it's published, it, it's obviously going to be public. Um, so I, I think that's going in a good direction, but um, I'm, I'm, we'll see. So uh, we have another meeting today. Uh, it's actually going to be presented on uh, early in December. I don't know the exact date, but so it has to be, um, the report needs to be done by about Thanksgiving US, which is two weeks from now. Uh, so there isn't much time, unfortunately. Um, any questions on that? All right. Uh, OpenWRT Summit, uh, we're going to, OpenWRT Summit is having another meeting. Um, uh, the committee is having a meeting on, uh, let me check the date. It should be, uh, let me, I think it's two weeks from now. I sent out an invite to people. Um, I don't know what just happened. Oh, there we go. Um, no, it's on, it's on the 30th. Um, it should be three week, three weeks from now. Uh, so we're going to have another meeting. Um, let me share my screen again. Cause it stopped. Um, also, I invited Daniel Goal. I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce his name. He's a very active member of the lead community and in OpenWRT. Um, he spoke at the summit about, uh, I think it was uh, UB, 
I'm not really sure. I don't remember offhand what exactly it was. It had to do with Flash. I don't remember the details. Um, but uh, I asked him if he'd like to be involved, and he was he was happy to be involved. So we're going to be adding uh, additional people. Um, so I think that's really good. Um, carrier interest group uh, face to face. Well, it shouldn't be face to face. Just meeting. Um, we're having the follow up meeting um, on November sixteenth, which is next week. Um, to the best of my knowledge, we have all the participants are going to be there except for Scott. However, there is going to be another Broadcom representative who agreed to come. So uh, I know Scott can't make it because of travel, uh, but he he said he was going to, to submit his uh, his feedback and information on the topics that we had discussed related to um, coming coming up with um, agreeing on common APIs and things like that. Where Where is that held? Oh, the meeting? It's not a face to face. Uh, it, it's oh. it's a it's a <laughs> it's a conference. It's a video conference. Okay. Right. It, I, that's a typo. Um, so yeah, we're, we're going to have a. It's going to be a go to meeting. Um, and so that's the detail there. Uh, Walter, did you have any update on? I know you were you were looking to you might be looking to uh, get some people together to talk about this, the common API topic. Uh, yes, I have my uh, my to do list from last week's call, and I haven't been able to get it started yet due to uh, all sorts of uh, urgent interruptions. I apologize. No problem. I've I've been there. I know that feeling. So yeah, that's the, that's the gist of that. Any questions on that? Anyone has? All right. Uh, one quick thing I wanted to mention is is everyone has noticed we are on Fuse. Uh, we've had a quite a few complaints about that as of late. There we, there have been a number of problems with Fuse, so we are decided that we are going to move all of our video, our audio and video conferences to go to meeting. Um, it fits as many of our needs as possible because we have a relatively complex set of needs that isn't well served by any of the systems and it's also somewhat reasonably priced um so i suspect i think next week we will have we'll actually switch to go to meeting um you can still connect via um just a web browser uh if you're not presenting so it's not going to be a real big issue if you don't want to install something uh as long as you i think have chrome and pot i would assume firefox it works in linux if you use linux as your desktop um, and of course, it has has uh, you can use WebRTC and and your browser on any system, but also has native apps for uh, Windows and Mac and Android and and i iOS and I'm sure a few others. So uh, it's probably I think going to be the best. And you can still call in via phone if if that is a requirement because that has been a requirement in the past. So uh, shouldn't be a huge change. Just keep on the lookout that. You know, don't come to the same pl same link. It will be different, and we I will certainly send out a different you know send out the link. Just just keep your keep your you know um, eyes open for that. Any questions? Any comments? Anything we need to cover? Uh, maybe one thing, Eric. This is Niels. Um, are you available yep. after this meeting? Uh, could I call you on the phone? and talk about a few things? Sure, we can talk, definitely. Brilliant, okay. I'll give definitely. you a call for the meeting. Okay, sounds good. Okay, thanks. Great. Thank you. All right, any other comments or questions? All right, well, thanks everyone, and uh, see you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.